sort of bridge between the the business side and the creative end product really and it's and it's trying to do what's right from a business point of view but but help it to be something that some can gonna affect people um, in the right way through you know through good creative work. Uh, no, I I was interested in advertising, and I didn't. I think I did know about planning, and I um, I did I did one graduate scheme application to what was Ogilvy, Benson, and Mather, and they rejected me <laughs> flatly. So then I became a researcher um, for a little bit, and then I and then I went into JWT, not entirely certain about whether I would end up as a planner or an account person, but. Um, I started in account management because it seemed better to start there and go into planning than the other way around. Well, um, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's hugely easy because uh, there aren't that many. I mean, there aren't that many sort of graduate schemes or anything that that take planners. Probably particularly not not now. Um, but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that there aren't ways in. Um, and you know, even even back in the day, um, you know, there was quite an expectation that you might do something first, be it account management or work in a research company or media. The best thing is that, uh, you know, I I can really not think of very many times when I've been bored, uh, and I have a pretty low boredom threshold, and um, it's just I just. There's a lot of things I would find incredibly boring, and uh, I've not. I don't think I've really been been bored very much. Um, I think the the less good things are. I mean, you know, it can be frustrating that you don't have you don't have power. I mean, you can't you you can't control the entire situation. You can't you can't entirely control the client. You can't entirely control the account people. Um, you're quite dependent, actually, often on the account people for. You know, setting you up to win and framing the relationship in a way where you can be successful, and, and don't underestimate that. Good account people are incredibly important from that point of view, um, and you certainly can't control the creative people, and you can't really control consumers either. So you know, there's an awful lot you can't control. Um, so you have to, you know, you operate in a in a in a world where even if you do your very best stuff, then you know, an awful lot of stuff may go wrong. Particularly when you're starting out, cause you just want to do a good job. You just want people to see how great you are. And it'll it won't be it won't be a linear path. Stuff stuff will go wrong and stuff will be crazy. One of the best lines someone always said to me was like, "There are no great briefs, only great work." And it's not true because there are great briefs, but the the sentiment of it is true in the sense that you know don't expect that because you've done your bit and delivered it that that it's over because actually it's not. It's only just begun and. You have to look for the opportunities to have a positive influence on the work um, throughout the process. Well, I think if you can get into a, a good grad scheme, um, it's it's probably still really, really good. Um, and I mean, funnily enough, you know, yesterday I was interviewing for the, the WPP fellowship, which is the scheme whereby people come into WPP and they spend a year in three different companies and I mean if that had been open to me I would have I would have loved that because to be quite honest when I left university and you know even for years afterwards I mean I didn't really know quite what I was going to do so the idea of sort of doing a bit of a few different things and then making your decision it seemed really attractive or seems really attractive. Um, research agencies have often been a you know traditionally a, a very good route and even though the you know the work of the planner. It's you know it's probably not so not so directly kind of consumer insight as, as perhaps it was, but it's still it's still like really absolute kind of bedrock. A lot of it is being able to demonstrate an interest in it. So you have got things like the APG, where hopefully you can you know you can sort of network and you can make yourself acquainted with what's happening in the industry. If somebody comes and says you're interested in planning, you expect them to have, to know something about it and to have taken an interest in the discipline and in advertising. I'm interested in people's side projects or just stuff they do outside work. Um, I would love them to show an interest in sort of popular culture and, and just to be sort of well 
well plugged into to that. Um, I'd be interested to know what you know what they've done that's kind of put them into situations where they've had to learn about people, maybe quite you know even if they're quite sort of odd odd situations. The obvious one is a sort of wide range of, you know, interests and sort of, you know, curiosity rather than necessarily just naked ambition. If you get people that have just like say that they've all, the only thing they've ever wanted to do is do advertising from the moment they came out of the womb, then they're probably not they're probably not very good planners. Um, yeah, I should probably be account people, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, no, you know, but you know what I mean. Even even very smart people sometimes make terrible interviews. I mean, it probably helps if they if the person is uh, sober, as I sometimes wasn't when I had a couple of um, I had a couple of interviews at great agencies where I definitely wasn't sober. But that was like kind of you know many years ago. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend uh, that as an interview strategy. But uh, no great ones. Um, I mean, I I remember interviewing Russell Davies for the first time, and uh, that was just I can conjure it in my mind's eye with complete vividness. I mean the great interviews are conversations that you just kind of want to go on. You know? If you can get on a pitch or something then everybody everybody's under such pressure that they will really notice when somebody is just being kind of really useful and sometimes on a pitch you know it's like time time is so pressed that if a very junior person has, has a great idea or makes a contribution, then if it's useful in the pitch, then it's going to get used and people forget about the, the hierarchies a bit. Um, so that's probably a, kind of a good, a good piece of advice. I, mean, I think, I think the, best, the best advice I was given when I started at one agency was, was you know, um, there's no process here and there's no structure. The only thing that makes it work are relationships. And, you know, that was, that was very good advice because it was just like, don't, you know, don't worry too much about being a planner, I just become part of the thing. I was probably in a little bit too much of a hurry, I think, um, and I think I could probably have, I could probably have. I mean, I was at, no, I mean, I was in the planning department of JWT, which, in its, you know, in the sort of, you know, mid '80s, which was pretty much. I mean, all the, I mean, Stephen King was there, Judy Lamb was there. Tony Stead was running the department. Um, there were incredible, incredible people in there, and uh, yeah, I mean, I could probably have listened a bit more and been been in a bit less of a, in a little bit less of a hurry. I mean, I think knowing when to, knowing when to, to be assertive, and sort of push yourself into a situation and but without going too far is really helpful. And there have certainly been, you know, when I started out, I was, I was like way too, I was kind of way too ambitious and cocky and I was kind of horrible really, probably, uh, looking back on it and did one or two things. But, you know, later on there were a couple of occasions where um, I was in a situation where I thought, I mean, there was one particular one where like, yeah, massive great, I was fairly new on an account, I hadn't kind of completely got her head around it. Um, there was a big client presentation, and you know the guy who had been doing it, doing planning on it before, was sort of being penciled in to do it, even though really I should have been doing it. And I could have, at that point, I could have said, "Well, um, okay, that's fine. Let him let him do it." Uh, and that would have been an easy thing to do. And I actually thought, "Well, you know what? If I don't do this, then I'm kind of..." not really doing what I'm there to do. So I said, look, I want, I want to do it. Uh, and the folks said, that's fine, you know, do it. Do a good, don't fuck up. <laughs> and, uh, and I did it, I had to work really hard to do it, and it was very successful, and it actually sort of transformed, you know, the situation I was in on that account, and then it became, you know, it was pretty plain sailing from then on. And, and so I had to, but that was very much sort of self-directed, and it would have been very easy not to do that. But on the other hand, you know, you don't want to be kind of the guy who's always pushing themselves forward when when they shouldn't be, and you know, you have to sort of respect. So it's just getting that right is quite important. I mean, it's just being prepared to go out and talk to real people. And obviously nowadays it's quite easy to learn a lot about real people online, but there's still no substitute for actually getting out and sticking your, you know, sticking your camera in someone's face and asking them some questions and just getting to getting to know them. And I mean that makes a huge it makes a huge difference and it gives you 
even if that's not the only source, it gives you an awful lot of authority if you've been out there and just talked to, talk to people. You can just say, oh, well, when I did it. And so that doesn't have to be necessarily in a formal research environment. Sometimes it's just much more kind of ad hoc, but it's pretty important and pretty scary sometimes. <laughs>